This is QTV News Broadcasting from the Gambia, and I am Marietu Sidibe. Our top stories. Presidents Bio and Barrow to foster Freetown Banjul ties. President Bio visits Kew City at Bijulo. Edward Singate killed Barrow and others, alleges former RSM. Those are our top stories, and now the news in detail. Presidents Adam Abaro and Julius Madabio have renewed their commitment to cooperating on diverse areas for the benefit of both countries. They made this declaration during a press conference at the State House in Banjul. Ali Sise was at the conference and he now reports. Sarah Lunian President Julius Madabio and First Lady Fatima Jabi arrived in the country on Tuesday afternoon for a two-day state visit. Facing the press after a closed-door meeting at the State House in Banjul on Wednesday morning, President Barrow and his counterpart recognize the fact that both countries have a long-standing healthy relationship. This, they say, is something they want to take to another level. Our two countries have had a very long relationship, uh, spanning over 300 years. And uh, the relationship has been healthy. Uh, we want to take it to higher heights. We want to deepen this relationship. We want to widen that, this relationship. For the benefit of our two countries, um, of course, we share a lot in common today in terms of uh, politics, in terms of the economy, in terms of the um, challenges we face. I think it is very, very important. Gambia, our policy is we want to open up to the world, and this is part of what we are doing. And also, we seize the opportunity also to thank Sierra Leone, because during the impasse, Sierra Leone they took a leading role in solving the problem in the Gambia. I think we needed to commend them for that and thank them also. Uh, and also we discuss about the leadership. In Africa, if you look at the leadership, we have a young leadership. And that young leadership, they have a big responsibility in moving this country, continent forward. President Barrow says the young leadership of Africa has a big role in bringing about good governance on the continent. While for Bio, many such as corruption is a threat to national development and security. Just like in the Gambia, Sierra Leone under Bio has also set up a commission of inquiry into the former regime of Ernest by Kruma. As to what are the areas that the two countries could continue to cooperate in, this is what they have to say. The areas we have discussed, education of course, a lot of Gambians have passed through Sierra Leone as far as education is concerned. And there are other areas also trade, trade and investment. These are areas we want to cooperate in uh, moving this relationship forward because we know very well Sierra so Leone have a lot of resources. I think if we are in partnership, that will help us in this relationship. And both countries can benefit from that relationship. These are the areas we, we discuss. In addition, Gambia does very well in tourism. There's a lot to learn from Gambia. And uh, I think uh, in West Africa, Gambia is one of the favorite destinations for tourism, for tourists. So we are also trying to learn from the Gambia, what, what has been put in place in terms of infrastructure to attract tourists here. Of course, education has always been a force, uh, a binding force between our two countries. And uh, we are happy that a lot of progress has been made on this side. We don't have a lot of Gambians going on that side again for education. But most of us have colleagues here we went to school with who are Gambians, and we want to see what sort of, um, uh, how we can strengthen that relationship also at the educational level. Fisheries, governance, and a lot of other issues uh, uh, we have discussed are of importance to us because we know that when you compare notes, there are always uh, differences, but you learn from, from, from what is happening uh, at different ends of governance in the two countries. At the international stage, both leaders reaffirm their support to Africa's common stance of Africa getting two permanent seats at the UN Security Council. Sierra Leone is a country that has witnessed a severe civil war but has reconciled to move on. This Tobaro is something that the Gambia could learn from after what he caused 22 years of dictatorship. The government has set up a Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission to look into the past alleged human rights violation. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. 
Visiting Sierra Leonean President Julius Madabio on Wednesday visited Q City at Bijilo. He was taking on a conducted tour of the facility by Mohamed Ja, CEO of Q Group. President Bio spoke to QTV's Aliusise shortly after the visit. Aliusise reports again. Situated in Bijilo, Q City, a multi million dollar facility, is the Gambia's first multi purpose recreation center that offers activities for children and adults of all ages. Q City is fully equipped with the world's standard facilities. It has been widely described as a perfect and most secure facility for relaxation and sporting activities. President Julius Madabio and First Lady Fatima Jabi were received on arrival at Q City by CEO of Q Group Mohamed Ja and wife Ashley Ja together with staff of Q City. The rare visit took President Bio and entourage on a conducted tour of the city, therefore giving them the opportunity to see for themselves what Q City is all about and the facilities available. Q City is the latest addition to the number of companies under the Q Group family, pioneered from a humble beginning by Mohamed Ja, who were from a humble family in Nyomi. Mohamed Ja has over the years made a remarkable impact on the private sector of the country. The Q Group is one of the top private employers in the Gambia. President, um, it's, um, it has all the, the sporting amenities. Mm -hmm. uh, from the football field, it's FIFA standard. And then on, on your right, you have the Olympic um, tennis. tennis um, and then you have the NBA basketball. Everything we try to do here, we do it up to standard, so that if you have an international match, they can do it from here. Um, we also have football, a football school, a tennis school, and a basketball school. Mm. And the, the football school, we are training this, uh, for the next five years. We are building a World Cup team for Gambia. Okay. We, we've taken kids from 13 years old to 15 years old, mm -hmm. and we're training them for the next five years. And we have a trainer, a technical assistant from Korea, South Korea, and one from Barcelona. Mm. So they are training them. Okay. This is just the, the gym, outside gym, mm -hmm. for the upper, upper one. We have the lower on the other side. Okay. With QCL going sub-regional, Sierra Leone in particular, President Bio says he is proud of the work being done by Mohamed Ja. To him, Africa needs more of people like Mohamed Ja to advance the continent's development agenda. Well, I'm quite impressed uh, with uh, the facilities all located in one place, uh, from children to adults, and a lot of things to be done. And uh, I think this is innovative. I saw, I think the first windmill I've seen in Africa or West Africa, uh, that is quite innovative, uh, trying to, cost, uh, to, to cut the cost down and also trying to go green. This is quite impressive. We have QCL in Freetown. How do you think this will impact on telecommunication in, in Sierra Leone? Well, it's a welcome development. We want to see Africans uh, as a Gambian, a Sierra Leonean. Um, uh, he's one of ours. Uh, I think um, he becomes a role model immediately for our own kids, knowing that one of us can actually go to school here and finish in Sierra Leone and then become uh, a successful business person. That is uh, refreshing and uh, that is something that leaders like us will encourage. Why do you think it is important for Africa as a developing continent to have people like Mohamed Jha? So that uh, we can be seen also, it's not all the time that we have to have our role models out of the continent. Uh, it's not always that we have to look out of the continent for people or ideas. We can when we want to, and uh, he set the example and pace, and therefore uh, it is good for our children to know that they have people that they can emulate. Meanwhile, President Bio and First Lady Fatima Jabi are expected to visit QCL head office and QTV along Kairaba Avenue on Thursday. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. XRSM Babu Karijeng on Wednesday continued his testimony before Commissioners of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. He was testifying in relation to events that led to the military coup in 1994, his alleged subsequent arrest, detention and torture, and the events of November 11, 1994. QTV's Ansumana Esonyasi reports. Continuing his testimony, Ex-Regimental Sergeant Major Babukar Malik Jeng on Wednesday told Commissioners of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission that he was the first military detainee who was taken to mile two prisons in the aftermath of the military takeover in 1994. Testifying on the conditions of the prisons and the inhuman treatment allegedly limited to him while in detention, the witness claimed he was denied access to a lawyer or family visit. 
none of my family members did I spoke to or were able to have the opportunity to come and pay a visit to me at mile two. Because they tried and those were not open for them. And there I was made to know that young Kuba Ture, young Kuba Ture, young Kuba Ture tried to deny my family all efforts to be able to reach at me. That even council members at the time would agree and then set a date only to find out later that young Kuba Ture, young Kuba Ture, young Kuba Ture would deny them that. On the infamous late night visit by council members on the night of September 6, 1994, the witness alleged he was severely beaten, locked up in security wing number one under solitary confinement and was subjected to a mock execution in the presence and supervision of all council members with the exception of ex-council chairman Lieutenant Yaya Jame. Where I was on my knees because of I was in so much pain I couldn't bear. And then later when I was able to stand up, I stood up and I was right against the wall. About three soldiers were in front of me pointing their guns and they were asked to get ready. And then it was there that young Kuba Ture said to me I should say my last prayers because that was going to be the end. And I said to him, and then what? The fact that I said, and then what? He insulted my mom, which I found more painful to me from Yang Kubatre than what I went through that night. The witness who several said tears while narrating his ordeal decried the conditions of the mile two prisons at the time of his detention. And someone is on Yasi for QTV News. Meanwhile, ex-RSM Jeng made disturbing revelations while testifying on the November 11, 1994 incident in which some members of the Gambia Armed Forces were allegedly executed at the Yundum and Fajara barracks. QTV's Ansumana Isunyasi tells us more again. While continuing his testimony on the November 11, 1994 incident, the witness made disturbing revelations accusing ex-Junta Vice Chairman Edward Singate of physically participating in the execution of Lieutenant Basiru Baro and others. It was Lieutenant Basiru Baro, Lieutenant Dotfal, Sajin Fafanyang, Jipilse himself, Bakari Mane Nyancho, Lieutenant Bakari Mane at the time, Lieutenant Abdullahi Ba, we call him a chopping, Kedet Amadou Silla, Umudu Lamin Dabo, Sergeant Basiru Kamara, Sergeant E.M. Sise, Sergeant Fafanyang. The witness also provided the commission with a list of soldiers who were executed at Yundum and Fajara barracks. Lieutenant Basiru Baro was shot in the head by Edward Singate at Fajara Barak exactly at 2 a.m. Lieutenant Dot Fall was killed at Yundum Barracks by volley of sorts. Lieutenant Edward Singate was responsible together with his brother Peter Singate Lamin Fati, who is now a twice at Yundum Barracks, together with Baj Samba Jalo. E.M. Sise, Sergeant E.M. Sise, was executed at Yundum Barracks, who, before his execution, asked them to kindly allow him to pray to Rakas. He was stripped naked. They allow him to pray to Rakas before his before being shot dead by, again, Edward Singate, Peter Singate, Alaji Kanye, and Lamin Fati.
Meanwhile, the witness also told the commission that former Vice President Seho Sabali masterminded the July 22, 1994 coup. Further testifying, the witness alleged it was common knowledge in the army that the former Vice President was dissing out cars to some senior members of the Gambia Armed Forces and held a series of clandestine meetings with them, all aimed at overthrowing the Jawara administration. Antumana Soyanyasi for KTV News. The Constitutional Review Commission, CRC, on Tuesday held a discussion with the chiefs to seek their opinions on the current governance system in relation to their appointments, removal, and jurisdiction. The discussion was held at a local hotel in Kololi. Ajibinto Drame reports. The gathering is meant for chiefs of respective communities to engage in vital discussion on their objectives and aspirations that they wish to be reflected in the Constitution. Justice Cheron Sleiman Jalo, chairman of the CRC, highlights the agenda, adding how the commission will implement and engage the Gambian people in the diaspora to contribute towards the process. Well, we have started with the public consultations first, which is first really to look at uh, what uh, the people's uh, thinking uh, re really is with respect to the specific subject matters uh, that are embodied in the Constitution. But beyond that, obviously, we are also listening to uh, what aspects uh, that people feel should be given constitutional recognition that may not necessarily be there. But we do need to recognize the fact that the current Constitution is not entirely uh, bad. It does have very good provisions. Uh, uh, in, 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 in it. So we will look at all of those components in order to ensure that ultimately we come up with a, con with a constitution that truly reflects uh, because the governor, the regional governors also participated in a public consultation but took a back seat and they are an important constituency uh, in the local government framework. So it is important that uh, we liaise with them as well, consult with them, seek their opinions as well as put to them opinions that we received from the public to see what their own take is uh, on those matters. So that will essentially be what the reason we are meeting with the chiefs and also the reason why we will be meeting with the regional governors. Beyond that, we will also ho uh, be hopefully be in a position to meet with the local government ministry officials as well as uh, in the executive generally, having met with the local government uh, authorities last week. Chief Lamin Dabo of Kumbo South West Coast Region highlights the importance of Chief Tansi and how chiefs we are timid and stayed away from participating in such discussions. He pleads with the government to augment their allowances as their duties are demanding. He continues that chiefs are the custodians of tradition and cultural norms. The, the agenda today is that the chief, all the traditional chiefs in the Gambia have been given the opportunity today to meet the Constitutional Review Commission to discuss certain issues pertaining to the chieftaincy in the Gambia. Well, they have crisscrossed the length and breadth of the country from West Coast up to URL. They've met people there, and this is the time for them to meet the chiefs because, as the chairman has rightly said, in those meetings, uh, some chiefs stayed right behind. They didn't want to give any comments in to order to avoid causing a prejudice to their people, that if the chief speaks, some of them would, out of respect, would not want to speak. Chiefs are presidents of district tribunals. Could we empower? They have their limitations within the law. So CRC should duly consider, you know, widening, adjusting the powers of the district tribunals, etc. These are some of the issues which we may want to discuss with the members of the Constitutional Review Commission. He concludes that, in his perspective, chief tenses should be protected and acquired through heredity and suggests that the CRC should broaden the powers of the district tribunals. As chiefs, members of district tribunals, you preside over all aspects, the different types of cases. So due consideration has to be given to them with regards to allowances. We review cases pertaining to land issues, which is becoming a, 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 a major issue now. Land cases, we settle divorces, etc. We deal with all kinds of issues. So for that matter, due consideration has to be given as sort of an incentive, you know, with regards to allowances. I, I think I support that wholeheartedly. Ajibintu Drame, QTV News. In sports, 
History was made over the weekend in Basse when St. George Senior Secondary School finally ended the 11-year winning streak of Bansang Senior when both schools were announced joint winners of this year's region's five and six school athletics heats. Babu Karsi has more on the story. After three days of competition at the Nasir Senior Secondary School with more than 20 schools participating, Bansang Upper Basic won the junior category. But the drama was at the senior level when St. George's wowed the fans with a spectacular performance. They are the school to watch out for on the tracks in the finals of the Interschools Athletics Championship this year. St. George's Senior Secondary School produced an eye-catching performance in Basse, winning most of the spring events and coming at par for the first time in 11 years against Bansang. Bakari Kamara, a former athlete, is the sports master of St. George's Senior Secondary School. In last year, I was in Bansang. Last year I was in Bansang. I performed there very well too. So I decided to come to St. George's too. Because I can, I, 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 saw, I see that, you know, Sierra and Sierra, they are the schools always they used to compete each other, Bansang and St. George's. So this year, for 10 good years, Bansang are dominating. In a row. So this I decided to leave, uh, last year I decided to leave Bansan to come to St. George's so that I can also help them, so that they can also take the force. My preparation is to, since August, at the end of August, I started preparation for this thing this year. Because I know that this year it will not be easy. Yes, that's why I prepare so everything, I prepared it. Although my first days and second days is very poor, my loneliness has disappointed me, but nonetheless, but I prepare for a sprinter. You know, I'm a sprinter too, I'm a, lonely, I'm a 100 meter runner, 200 meter runner, so I capitalize those things. Those events so that I can qualify the boat. So God helped me on those things. I qualified it very well. And I saw how the person happy. Bansang Senior are also coached by a national athlete, Suleiman Tamba, who told QTV that this year's Interschools trophy is coming to CRR. To be a champion is very difficult. You know, Bansang is a champion almost for 11 good years. And this is 12 years. So the defending title is very good, be very tough for them. So every, every region, every school in this region is trying to challenge Bansang. So the competition is very tough this year, I can see. Because St. George's at least this year they are better. At least they are coming up a little bit. Their school have given motivation. They are trying a little bit. But they cannot challenge Bansang. Bansang is ahead of them. Uh, well, you have seen a very great performance. And Bansang have been leading this area for the past 11 years, as really mentioned. What is next? What's your target? Because the big guns around the combos are also waiting. Um, this year in combo, it's very, it will going to be very tough. But as you can see this year, my sprinter, two sprinters are here. At least, I promise you, you go to combo, at least they will come with something. Yes, I promise you, come out. people like Chona, Amadou and Idrissa, they are good fine sprinters. And if they go to combo, they can come out first or second, I promise. What message do you have for the teams, you know, all schools around the combos, the big guns waiting as the winning champions, both drop are there again? Yeah, let them prepare. This year is going to be different. Because these are kids, in the, kids here, they are well prepared. This year, if they go to Como, Como school, they, have, they will find it very difficult to challenge. They are not going to challenge them at the last minute. But this year, they are going to be different. For the first time in history, the Ministry of Youth and Sports attached an official to monitor the Secondary School Sports Association. Musanjai of Ministry of Youth and Sports shared his impression after watching the three-day event. When you're talking about national selection, it is imperative that you see all and sundry, all the athletes who participate in all the regions must be given the opportunity to showcase themselves and then to be looked at by the national coaches for selection processes. I mean, coming over here is uh, definitely something that uh, I'm going to be replicating in all the other regions. From here, we are moving to Batrop for the Western Region um, competition. The idea is uh, to look at the organizational structure, technical, and all other things that pertain to the development of um, athletics in this case. But uh, we are going to move to, onto other sports as well. The Secondary School Sports Association will now shift attention to the West Coast region where more than 70 schools are expected to compete for sports in the grand final built for March 2019 at the Independence Stadium in Bakau. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, a recap of our main stories. Presidents Adam Abaro and Julius Madabio have renewed their commitment to cooperating on diverse areas for the benefit of both countries. They made this declaration during a press conference at the State House in Banjul. Visiting Sierra Leonean President Julius Madabio on Wednesday visited Q City at Bijilo. He was taking on a conducted tour of the facility by Mohamed Ja, CEO of Q Group. 
XRSM Babukar Jeng on Wednesday continued his testimony before Commissioners of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. He was testifying in relation to events that led to the military coup in 1994, his alleged subsequent arrest, detention and torture, and the events of November 11, 1994. Meanwhile, XRSM Jang made disturbing revelations while testifying on the November 11, 1994 incident in which some members of the Gambia Armed Forces were allegedly executed at the Yundum and Fajara barracks. That's it for this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.